Now, for the purpose of this video, we are going to be talking about a concept known as the test clause. All right. Before explaining what the test clause is all about, I'm going to give you a situation. Now, the situation here is as follows. You have a gene that affects body color and the gene has two alleles. The capital B allele makes the organism blue, small b allele makes the organism red. This is just my example. Now, as you can see, this organism over here, the color of this particular organism is blue in color. So you as a person, you are wondering, is it homozygous dominant, which is large b, large b, or heterozygous, which is large b, small b? Because both these genotypes can make the organism become blue in color, right? So sometimes the question will ask you, how would you determine the genotype of this organism? You know the phenotype, you know the color of the organism, it's blue, but there is a possibility that it could be large B, large B genotype or large B, small B genotype. So how would you find that out? So some of my students will say, well, we just cut it open and we check the DNA or something. And that's, I mean, it is possible to check the organism's DNA. Obviously, there are technology that allows us to do that, but there is an easier way to do it. So how do we determine its genotype? The way to determine its genotype is by doing a method known as the test cross. What exactly does the test cross entail? The organism over here, as I'm drawing it out, we know that it has one large B allele because it's blue in color. It's just the second allele that we don't know because it could be large B, it could be small B. But to find out its genotype, what we just have to do is we just have to breed it with an organism that is a homozygous recessive organism. Breed the organism with the unknown genotype with the homozygous recessive organism. And the homozygous recessive organism is small b, small b. And we know that the color is going to be red no matter what. So what you just have to do is when you breed them together, this concept is known as test cross. And by doing so, you will be able to identify the unknown genotype. So how does that work? Let's check it out. You see, we know for the fact that for the blue organism, 50% of the gametes will be large B and 50% of the gametes we don't know because it could be large B, it could be small B, we don't know. But we know that for the red organism over here, 100% of the gametes will only be just small B allele. So when you cross them together, there are two possibilities. The two possibilities over here are as follows. When you cross large B and small B, the offspring genotype is large B, small B, that's fine. There is also a possibility that, that, that the unknown gamete will fertilize with the small B. And you look at the phenotype of the offspring. If the phenotype of the offspring is both blue, that means all the offsprings that they get are just blue in color, we know that that second offspring has to be large B, small B. So the question mark has to be large B. And therefore, the parent is a homozygous dominant organism. That's it. That's how you know that. But in the other possibility over here, if they cross together, where large B, small B, that's fine. But in the unknown genotype over there for the offspring, it gets a red offspring. You know that the red offspring over here is small b, small b. So one of the alphabet has to be small b over there, the question mark, which means to say the parent also provided one small b allele. So the parent in this case is heterozygous. That's the purpose of a test cross right here. So by crossing it with a homozygous recessive organism and by looking at the offspring, you are able to determine the unknown genotype of the parent. That's just essentially what a test cross is all about. That's it.